The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of life, on this day you poured forth upon your church, your spirit, through whom we are one body, the body of Christ. Unite us at your table that we may be poured forth into the world, bearing witness to your grace and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is taken from the 37th chapter of the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley. And behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are indeed cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. Please join in responsively reading with me from Psalm 139. 
O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light about me be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness as is light with you. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearful and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them. The days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. The second reading is taken from the second chapter of the book of the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost arrived, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly, there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it? that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares. 
that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, beginning in the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, When the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me, and you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. And none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment concerning sin because they do not believe in me, concerning righteousness because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer, concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said, that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, O creatures here below. Praise him. I invite the young and young at heart to attend to the children's message today. Uh, and 
How appropriate that Luther Bear and his friends are here because they're all a little bit different. We have a rabbit, a bear, and a lobster. And you three remind us of all the different people who came together from so many different places on that festival of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came. And it was a heavenly miracle that they could all understand each other and the preaching about Christ who had come to save them all. Oh, and I see you brought your children's Bible today. Yes, today is a day that we give thanks for having God's holy word in all different languages, and in language we can understand. So your children's Bible uses some smaller words and you can understand what God has done for you all and his love in Jesus. And people who speak different languages, thanks to men who have traveled and translated, some people, missionaries, even were the first to write down the language of the people where they served and bring the Bible into their language. It is amazing work of the Spirit, which we celebrate today. So in your prayers today, give thanks for all who bring the good news of Jesus in all different languages around the world to God's people. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The fullness of the church is the title of the chapter in this commentary on Acts 2, the fullness of the church. And they begin with an alternative translation. <laughs> translation is the word of the day um, uh, for our Acts reading. And this translation reads, when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Think about how many times we hear in scripture when the fullness of time had come or time having fully come. We know that God is keeping and fulfilling a promise at that time when it has fully come. And today, in our Acts reading, we are hearing that the promise Jesus made to the disciples that we hear in John's gospel is being fulfilled. The promised helper, the Holy Spirit has come. And so there is a fulfilling and a filling that is happening here. In verse four, we hear, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Spirit. Now, I'm not going to do a full English lesson here, but did they fill themselves with the Spirit? I don't think so. They were filled by God with the Holy Spirit spirit. It was a gift come down. They were filled. This is a gift of God. And again, fulfilling the promise that the spirit would not only come, but would make things clear and connect them to Jesus and continue that they would understand their call to share the good news to many lands that all God's children would know 
the life they have and salvation and mercy, love and peace through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. The book of Acts is full of those who are full of the Spirit and the actions that come out of being filled by the Spirit. We hear how often that Peter, filled with the Spirit, preached to the crowds. Uh, let's remember, Peter, not an orator by education, but a fisherman. And he's fishing for people by the power of the Spirit. And sometimes our English language fails to capture the sense of the Greek in our holy scriptures. And so I am uh, relying today uh, on uh, some exploration from the scholar uh, MacArthur, who writes the following. When we use the word fill in English, we normally think of something being placed into a container, such as milk being poured to the brim of a glass, water being run into a bath, or gasoline being pumped into a tank. But none of these examples conveys precisely the meaning of to fill or be filled. It has shades of meaning helpful in illustrating what this truly means from the Greek, and I will outline. The first carries the idea of pressure. It is used to describe wind billowing on a ship, billowing the sails on a ship, providing the impetus to move the vessel across the water. In the spiritual realm, this concept depicts the Holy Spirit providing thrust to move the believer down the pathway of obedience. A spirit-filled filled Christian isn't motivated by his own desires or will to progress. Instead, she or he allows the Holy Spirit to carry him in the proper direction. Another helpful example is of a small stick floating uh, in, um, in a stream. Uh, or uh, uh, I have a little spider crawling up here. He is fine. He's not hurting anything. Uh, just, just, um, the, the spirit uh, has calmed me and we're all okay. Um, so back to the stick. Um, the stick floating in the stream. Uh, most of us have tossed a stick into a creek and then run down to see where the twig comes floating by, propelled only by the force of the water. To be filled with the Spirit means to be carried along by the gracious pressure of the Holy Spirit. Um, another way of looking at the Spirit is the idea of permeation. A well-known pain reliever, Alka-Seltzer, illustrates this principle quite effectively. Dropping two tablets into a glass of water, they instantly begin to fizzle and dissolve. And soon the tablets are transformed into clear bubbles throughout the glass. The water is permeated with the distinct flavor of the Alka-Seltzer. In a similar way, God wants the spirit to permeate and flavor our lives so when we're around others, they will know for certain we possess the pervasive savor of the spirit. And there is a caveat about it's not just some spirit and we don't test it. Um, to be filled with the spirit, the apostle Paul recommends, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. One can be filled with the spirit only when controlled and following the word of God, knowing its truth and obeying it. So concludes MacArthur, being filled with the spirit means being pressured, permeated, and led by the spirit and God's word. So that sounds like a lot. 
One of the things I want to offer to us today is sometimes we feel very empty and run down. And we try to fill ourselves up maybe with all kinds of stuff that isn't so good. Or we doubt that God's going to fill us and refresh us and permeate and move us with the Spirit. He did, does, and will fill us with that Holy Spirit. And sometimes, in fact, maybe a good number of the times, that may change our direction in unexpected ways. And in our own church life, there is a historic prayer that has been used uh, to the Holy Spirit. Uh, And uh, I know the language is a little old, but you will uh, get the drift. Come, Holy Ghost, creator blessed, vouchsafe within our souls to rest. Come with thy power and heavenly aid and fill our hearts, which thou hast made. This was sung very often traditionally on Pentecost, but also for ordinations and opening of church meetings and councils. And I love this commentary here. Any church council that sings it at its opening must be prepared to deal with the possible consequences of the Spirit's leadership and movement in the life of the church, in our own families and lives. It is a blessing to know that we will be filled and led by the Spirit And in conclusion, I want us to, and please take your bulletins with you for prayer this week, the two hymns that we are singing. The first one, it's about, Lord, you speak to me that I may speak. The being filled that we may go forth with heavenly words of peace and mercy, grace and life. And we also will conclude our service today praying that the Lord will open our eyes that we may see glimpses of his truth. And we know that this has happened, is happening, and will continue to happen in the church on earth till our Savior comes again. It is looking to and giving thanks for the fulfillment and filling that comes from our blessed Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ and the Spirit that came, that we may be overflowing with that grace and hope to our hurting world today on this festival of Pentecost and always as we, the fruit of the Spirit goes out, We trust that we will be filled once again. Come, Holy Spirit. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.